Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier are taking a look at race number four at Santa Anita on Saturday. It features Unique Bella. It's the Grade 2 Santa Maria, and our coverage is presented by DRF Bets. And if you sign up for DRF Bets right now, you access a $200 free bet. No deposit required at drf.com forward slash join when you use the promo code FREEBET09. Let's take a look at this field of fillies and mares. They're going to go a mile and a sixteenth for $200,000. Unique Bella, she is the story in this race. Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. She went real fast early. She paid the price, perhaps kind of racing close to that deep and tiring inside at Del Mar. She came back in the La Brea and she looked good. Yeah, she was awesome. I mean, I, I, there's nothing else to say about that. That Breeders' Cup, you know, it was a matter of that's the only blemish that she's ever had in her entire career. It's, it's really kind of silly to doubt her too, too much. But uh, if you want to look at it and say, now you've got to do it against possibly better horses going longer, going two turns. But, I mean, you, you just have to go back to early last year as a three-year-old. She beat Abel Tasman. Abel Tasman was the champion three-year-old filly. So, I don't know. I mean, it's a scenario where I, I think she's going to be one to five or one to nine. Um, I don't know how much I want to have against her, but I mean, she's the most likely winner. She beat a good one in Paradise Woods in that La Brea. Now, maybe Paradise Woods was playing more of Unique Bella's game, going that seven mm -hmm. furlongs. We saw Paradise Woods acquit herself quite nicely in the Breeders' Cup distaff. Mike Smith rode Unique Bella like she was the best horse that day, broke from post three, couldn't wait to get her in the five path and in the clear, and once she swept to the front, she was able to win over a good filly. She's making the lead in here, isn't she? I mean, I think she clears off. I don't know how many other horses have the ability to go in there, even if they wanted to. I guess my only thing that I would bring up, and I'm curious what you think, I mean, she has not gotten faster. Is she going to ever go over the hump? Is she ever going to take that next step? Because if she doesn't, then it's kind of hard for me to just think that every time she shows up that she just uh, slam dunk to win. I think some folks might say that one of the reasons she hasn't gotten faster is she just hasn't been able to put a steady string of races together. I mean, she was the overwhelming favorite for the Kentucky Oaks after dusting yep. Abel Tasman and the Santa Isabel, and then she missed all that time. She only had one prep for the Breeders' Cup, and while the L.A. woman just looked good on paper, it's a bad field, and maybe she didn't get enough out of that race. The La Brea perhaps tightens her up. Maybe this is the time maybe this is that Unique Bella can do it, especially if she gets this time form U.S pace scenario. Here's the projector with Unique Bella out there on the lead. And they do have Shenandoah Queen, the number one, chasing. But if this scenario plays out, and especially if that blue bar is right, you're going to have a whale of a time catching this mare. Yeah, she's going to be really, really tough to run down in a spot like that, especially if it plays out exactly like that, where if you think arguably the horse to beat is, or the other horse to beat would be Mopatism or Majestic Heat. I mean, if they're going to be spotting her lengths, uh, good luck. Let's talk about Mopatism. She got that well-deserved victory in the grade two La Cañada last time out. She had to work for it against yeah. Mended, who was just a horse that's been on an absolute tear. Mopatism, though, is a, is a filly that it had it's kind of tough situation after tough situation. She probably could have won races like the Summertime Oaks or the Indiana Oaks with a better setup. So it was nice to see her get that win. But talk about a filly that may not be getting faster. A 91 buyer in the La Cañada. She's got to do better. I think she is what she is. I love her. I think she's rock she's, solid. She's consistent. She just shows up and runs. The problem is that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win. Uh, I can understand anyone that says the La Cañada was a disaster. It was a blanket finish. It wasn't a very good field. I thought inside was gold that day at Santa Anita. And the fact that Mopatism was a few lengths or, or a few pads off the rail for the majority of the run, I think that I want to move her up slightly. I know she popped to her left lead toward the end, but I, I think she's really, really nice. I think she's up way up against it here. As you can see from the projector, the number five Majestic Heat is a closer. Do you think that Mike Smith was a bit too confident last time out in the La Cañada? Because she was last, but she was really far back, tried to get into the race on the far outside. You mentioned you yeah. thought the rail was good, and Majestic Heat just looked like she was running in quicksand uh, towards the end of that race. Her Bayacoa two starts back and her uh, Betty Grable, the start before that, her first two starts ever on dirt were visually impressive. Yeah, I think the La Cañada was just an overall, I don't want to say you, you overestimated her capabilities, but, you know, she's not Zenyatta. She's nice. Uh, I don't think you can take that far back in a race where there was no pace. They were walking out there, and if I... If I'm right, and I think the inside was really good, and she was, you know, a country mile away from the inside, then I don't think that race is nearly as bad as it looks on paper. The key to her is can she run the Betty Grable from a tactical standpoint going two turns? Because you can't spot Unique Bella seven yeah, lengths. Especially with that pace. Scenario. If you can get close, and I think Flavian Pratt, I think you've got to use her a little bit. If you can sit a length or two off, 
you know what? Take your shot at her going around the far turn. If you're not good enough, you're not good enough. I'm still waiting for Shenandoah Queen to run back to that Tranquility Lake stake. <laughs> so maybe it's just as simple as that. It was a restricted stake. She was 20 to 1. We'll never see it again. I think she needs to drop in class, and the problem is she's not getting it here since then. The ship to Churchill, that doesn't bother me. I just didn't think she shipped very well. But then Majestic Heat's beaten her. Mopatism's beaten her. And if she's doing the dirty work chasing Unique Bella in here, I don't think the result's going to be any different. But I would keep an eye on when she drops in for the next uh, restricted race, if there is one. Yeah, I agree. I, I just don't see a, a scenario playing out where it works out for her. I think her job in this race is uh, the only way you can win is try to go. And they're taking a shot with the three. Kathy Song, uh, a filly that is competed mostly on the turf in her career, coming off of a grade one placing in the American Oak. She ran perfectly fine mm -hmm. in that spot, but I just don't know if she's a dirt filly. Yeah, I agree with you. Don't know. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade two Santa Maria Stakes. Majestic Heat. Matt, you're hoping someone, someone goes out there and at least pushes Unique Bell a little bit. I loved what I saw in her first two dirt starts. I have to be honest, I wouldn't even be opposed to Majestic Heat being the one to keep okay. Unique Bell a company. Again, if I can get back to a scenario like that Betty Grable, which by the way was last time Flavian Pratt rode her, get her into the race a little bit. Be the one to push Unique Bell. If Unique Bell is just superior to you, fine. I have no problem with that. But the last thing I want is to see Unique Bella walk out there for a 48 half mile and then she goes off and wins by seven because that doesn't teach you, doesn't show me anything about Unique Bella. That's right. And I also don't want to hold that against any of the other Phillies or Mares. We'll see if someone goes with Unique Bella. I have a feeling she's just too fast and these other trainers might be looking for valuable graded stakes, sure. black type with some of these other horses. Uh, I think she's going to get it done. I mean, Mopatism grinds it out perhaps for second, but you're going to take a shot with Majestic Heat 5 4 4. Matt. I'll go with Unique Bella in the grade two Santa Maria. If you're playing the Santa Maria, if you're playing Santa Anita on Saturday, heck, if you're playing anywhere, basically, on Saturday, you do it with DRF Bets because a $200 free bet is yours when you sign up at drf.com forward slash join. When you use the promo code FREEBET09, no deposit required. Approximate post time for the Santa Maria, 1.30 Pacific on Saturday. Best of luck.